All right, so let's consider this question to explain the concept of Bernoulli's equation. Question says, water is flowing through a pipe having diameters 150 mm and 100 mm at section 1 and 2. The rate of flow through the pipe is 35 liters per second. The section 1 is 6 meters above datum and section 2 is 4 meters above datum. The pressure at 1 is 400 kilonewtons per meter square. Question says find the pressure at section 2. So you are given the condition, this is the pipe. Okay, the first section has a diameter of 150 millimeters, so which means it has a larger portion than the second section. Whereas section 2 has a diameter of 100 millimeters. So you have this to be section 1 and you have this to be section 2. Alright, the diameters are given D1 here. D1 here is equal to 150 millimeters. So we convert this to meters. Converting 150 millimeters to meters divided by 1000, you're simply going to obtain 0 0.15 meters. So diameter 1 is given as 0 0.15 meters. Whereas diameter 2, D2, is given as 100 millimeters. Divide 100 millimeters by 1000 to convert it to meters, you have it to be 0 0.1 in meters. All right, so the question for that says, that section 1 is 6 meters above that zoom line and this is that zoom line 6 meters above that zoom line simply means z1 is equal to 6 meters and section 2 is 4 meters above that zoom line this is section 2 okay so z2 is equal to 4 meters section 2 is 4 meters above that zoom line and this is called the datum line okay not forgetting this is a datum line all right um, the question says the rate of flow through the pipe is 35 liters per second so flow rate or discharge flow rate slash discharge q is given as 35 liters per seconds and of course we need to convert this to meter cube per second okay to, to, to do that flow rate q is equal to converting liters per second you have 35 multiplied by 0 0.001 it becomes a meter cube per second so this simply means that our discharge is equal to 35 multiplied 0 0.001 gives us 0 0.00 35 meter cube per second so that becomes a discharge all right so we are asked to find the pressure at section 2 given that the pressure at section 1 is 400 kilonewtons per meter cube so p1 was given as 400 kilonewtons per meter cube okay per meter square sorry all right so we we'll have this to be the pressure at this section 1 now, to do this, we actually have to employ the Bernoulli's equation. So, using the Bernoulli's equation, using Bernoulli's equation, using Bernoulli's equation, recall the equation says that P1 all over specific weight plus V1 squared all over 2G plus z1 is equal to p2 all over w plus v2 squared all over 2g plus z2 in case there are losses then you add the losses there but since there's no losses then the equation remains like this now we know p1 we can find p1 all over w therefore p1 all over w is equal to remember p1 was given as 400 kilonewtons which is written here 400 kilonewtons per meter cube that simply gives you 400 kilo is by 10 to the power of 3 all over now take no specific weight is density times gravity so this is actually 400 by 10 to the power of 3 all over density is constant 1000 gravity is 9.81 so if you do this you are going to obtain 400 okay so from here 1000 cancels 1000 here so you have 400 divided 9.81 all right so if you do this you obtain 40.77 so that becomes the value of the pressure head
and it is measured in meters okay so we have the pressure head down for state one the next thing we need to do we know z1 and we know z2 all we need to do now is find their velocities okay so you find the velocities and then compute v1 squared over 2g compute v2 squared over 2g then fall back into the equation but to find velocity recall that discharge okay please do where to look up my video on discharge and flow rate i explained with examples how to solve for discharges and flow rates but recall that discharge q is equal to area times velocity and from continuity equation the discharge at the inlet is equal to discharge at the outlet i talked about all of this in the, in the discharge and flow rate video so do well to watch it up all right so from continuity equation discharge at state one equals discharge at state two so this simply means that q1 is equal to what q2 from continuity equation and they are all equal to q therefore q1 equals q and that's equal to a1 times what v1 because i said q is a times velocity therefore q1 is equal to q and it is equal to a1 times v1 if it is a1 times v1 this simply implies that i can find my velocity v1 by simply saying q all over what a1 all right so dividing this chart by area one will give you what velocity one now what is area one where area one is actually pi all over four times diameter one all squared so we'll compute area one this implies that a1 is equal to pi is 3.142 times diameter one was given as 0.15 all squared all over four so take notes v1 will obtain that value here as 0.15 okay so multiply by 3.142 all over 4 so we obtain now 3.142 multiply 0.15 squared that will give us 0.070695 divided by 4 and if we do this we can obtain the value of a1 to be equal to 0.0177 in meter square so a1 is given as that so if you know a1 then you can fall back to this equation find the value of v1 therefore v1 is equal to remember q all over a1 and that's equal to q which is a discharge is given as 0.0035 meter q per second so you have 0.0035 all over area itself the area itself now of open is 0 0.0177 0 0.0177 so this simply implies that the first velocity v1 is equal to 0 0.2 meters per second so you keep this aside all right so 0 0.0035 divided 0 0.0177 gives us v1 at 0 0.2 meters per second approximately so if we've gotten v1 we also use the same concept to find for v2 also um, from continuity equation we've also said that q2 is also equal to the discharge q and that will now become a2 times what v2 therefore you make v2 subject of the formula it becomes q all over a2 so all we need to do now is find a2 where a2 is actually pi times diameter 2 all squared all over 4. So this is equal to pi is 3.142 times diameter itself. Diameter at section 2 was given as 0 0.1 all squared all over 4. Alright, so A2 is now equal to, so let's compute 3.142 multiply 0 0.1 squared. That gives us 0 0.03142 all over 4. So if we divide this, we are going to obtain our second area, A2. So 0 0.03142 divided by 4 gives us 0 0.00785 in meter squared. So this becomes the second area. So if you know the second area, you can fall back to this equation and find the second velocity. So this simply implies that V2 
is now equal to remember discharge all over area 2 and discharge is constant 0 0.0035 all over the second area which is 0 0.00758 okay 785 sorry 785 so this implies that v2 is equal to so you find 0 0.0035 divided 0 0.00785 that gives us 0 0.44 meters per second so this becomes second velocity or velocity um, v2 0 0.44 so if you know these two velocities let's fall back now to the Bernoulli's equation the next step in the Bernoulli's equation is to compute v1 squared all over 2g since we already know z1 also we compute v2 squared all over 2g so that's all we need to do v1 squared all over 2g all right so therefore v1 squared over 2g is now equal to what is v1 the first velocity will obtain we obtain v1 here as 0 0.2 all right so that becomes 0 0.2 all squared divided by 2 times gravity is constant 9.81 all right so 0 0.2 squared gives us 0 0.4 all over 2 times 9.81 gives us 19.62 so if you compute this this simply implies that v1 squared all over 2g is now equal to let's obtain 0 0.4 divided 19.62 that gives us 0 0.002 in meters okay so this gives us v1 squared all over 2g just like this we also compute v2 squared all over 2g all right so computing v2 squared over 2g is equal to v2 we obtain v2 here as 0 0.44 so you have 0 0.44 all squared divided by 2 times g is 9.81 this is equal to 0 0.44 squared gives us 0 0.1936 all over 2 times 9.81 gives us 19.62 so if you do this we cannot obtain v2 squared all over 2g to now be equal to 0 0.1936 divided 19.62 that will give us 0 0.01 so we'll obtain this other part of the equation so i think everything on the Bernoulli's equation have been achieved we have v1 over 2g v1 squared over 2g we have v2 squared all over 2g we have our z1 and our z2 we have our p1 all over w we can now fall back into the Bernoulli's equation and start solving okay so let's do that here i think i can wipe here now all right so not forgetting v1 squared over 2g we obtain that value to be 0 0.00 so, so keep this aside as well so let's fall back to the Bernoulli's equation now we have p1 all over specific weight plus v1 squared all over 2g plus z1 to be equal to p2 all over specific weight plus v2 squared all over 2g plus z2 so let's put in these parameters into this equation we've obtained p1 all over w and we obtain that value over here as 40.77 okay we obtain p1 p1 over w as 40.77 plus we obtain v1 squared all over 2g v1 squared all over 2g as 0 0.002 so you put it down 0 0.002 plus z1 was given in the equation that is the height or the level of the um, section one above that line it was given as six this is now equal to p2 all over w this is what we are looking for p2 so you simply put it down p2 w itself remember is density times um, uh, gravity 
which is now 1000 times 9.81 okay plus v2 squared all over 2g and we obtain v2 squared over 2g as 0 0.01 so you put that down 0 0.01 plus z2 is the height of section 2 above that one and it was given as 4 in the question so we have this so from here we compute 40.77 plus 0 0.002 plus 6 that gives us 46.772 and that is equal to also from here we compute 0 0.01 plus 4 this becomes p2 all over 1000 times 9.81 gives us 9810 plus 0 0.01 plus 4 gives us 4.01 so let's send 4.01 over here i will have 46 0.772 plus 4.01 crosses an equal sign becomes negative it becomes minus 4.01 and this is equal to p2 all over 9810 so 46.772 minus 4.01 that gives us 42.762 which is now equal to p2 all over 9810 therefore to make p2 which is what the question is asking us to find the pressure at section 2 to make p2 subject of the formula we simply cross multiply 9810 multiplies everything here this now implies that p2 is equal to 42.762 multiplies 9810 and therefore the pressure at stage 2 is now equal to 419495.22 pascal you can either leave it in this form or you convert it to kilopascal which implies that p2 is equal to okay 1 2 3 1 2 3 419.50 kilo pascal so this can also be your um, second pressure so that's it on benoulis equation that's how to apply the benoulis equation in the next video i'll do a couple of questions to also explain the concept of benoulis equation till i see you in that video do well to like share and comment on this video and if you're new to the channel also do well to tap the subscribe button i will see you in the next video thanks and cheers